uh, record. And thank you so much. We are here at Wise Aging on the 18th of November with our special guest, uh, Aaron Wynn. Aaron is well known to our temple community, uh, worked here with our youth and family programs for 10 years. Well, how long were you here? 13, 13 years. years. And it's wonderful to have her back. She is here at the request of this group who are wanting to understand a little bit more about social media beyond Facebook. So, um, Erin, uh, let me see if I can figure out how to make you the host. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you go. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you the host so you can take charge. Perfect. Perfect. So, hi everybody. I know. I believe I know all of you, but. Um, so just a little bit about me. I was at Temple High for 13 years doing our youth and family programming. And then I left Temple in from, from pretty much full time to very part time in February when I took a job with the URJ um, as the regional youth director for Nifty Southwest. Some of your kids might have been in Swifty, um, which is what I was in. It's the same thing. Um, working with Nifty Southwest in the California URJ Camp Newman and um, SciTech West. And in June, I got laid off from my new job. And now I'm here with you guys. And I've been a stay at home mom for the last since June. Um, I have two little boys. I have a three and a half year old that's at Temple High's preschool. And then I have a, five, a six year old who just turned six months at Desert Trails Elementary School in Desert Ridge. And, and he in kindergarten and loving every day and we'll be back vir virtually starting next week wow. and so we've been doing lots of computer and lots of learning together in our house the last few months and i just have to tell you to start with i'm very proud of all of you being on zoom because my parents still can't figure out how to get on zoom and so making family family video calls has been quite a challenge the last um, eight months um, with me here with my family and my younger sisters in Denver. And then the rest of my family is in El Paso, um, hunkering down during this craziness because they're a very big time hotspot right now um, and trying to stay safe. So that's a little bit about me. Um, working with our youth at Temple High, I got to really know um, a lot, I feel a good amount about social media and the different social media outlets. Um, I'm not an expert by any means. I can tell you about Facebook, really. I'm gonna tell you about, you know, we'll go a couple things about Facebook. Most of you have Facebook. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the other outlets. I have Instagram, I have Snapchat, which you'll learn about also. Um, but besides that, I pretty much, you know, stay, I don't get on Twitter too often. I do have an account. Um, and then there's a couple of other programs outlets that we're going to talk about that I don't have, but I've messed around on just to get to know and specifically to get to know for you guys. So I will do my best answering questions. And then at the end of our little, our lesson, I actually have some tips that I got from some of the Temple High youth. So I asked some of the high school kids and some of the college kids and some of the young adults that are out of college for what they would say to you and some tips just to help you guys out. So some of them were a little bit entertaining and definitely, you know, things I would tell my parents also and my, and would have told my grandparents, but um, it's definitely funny to hear what they think as being so much younger. And, you know, I think of myself as pretty young, but 38 isn't that young anymore and not totally in the mix with everybody else. So um, I learned a couple of things from them about it also. So I'm gonna share my screen. So I made a little slideshow so that way you guys can see visually. I'm a person that works definitely much better visual. Yeah. So do you want to go back and lie down? Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. After we've gotten up and changed everything. Well, I mean, I'll stay. Here. Okay, can everybody see the picture that says social media? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice and big. Perfect. Okay. So I started off, it's not the clearest picture, but there was a Dolly Parton um, challenge that what happened a little while ago, I think happened actually at the beginning of um, quarantine, which Dolly Parton came out with a meme, which is what this is, pictures with words on it, 
um, talking about the different outlets. So LinkedIn, which is a business outlet, it's a great outlet to use. I'm actually getting myself on it since I'm now looking for a job, um, which is a great way to connect with people in your industry or other industries that you're interested in. And great way, you know, people get job offers this way and be able to build a community within their professional selves. So that's her LinkedIn picture. Her Facebook picture is a little bit more fun. Her Instagram, which you'll learn about in a few minutes, is way more fun. Mm -hmm. And then Tinder, which we're not going to talk about because I know zero about, um, is a dating app. And so that's her dating profile picture. And so I just thought they were cute. And I have one more for you, which is Al Roker. So LinkedIn, his Facebook, his Instagram, and then his Tinder is his fan pictures. And so it's just a little bit silly, but it definitely shows the difference between the seriousness to the silliness of the different... Um, social media outlets. So Facebook, this is my first Facebook profile um, picture. I'm just going to go over this really quick since most of you have Facebook. The average Facebook user is about 40, 40 and a half and 10% of these users are high school age or younger. This started out as a college is for college kids. Um, you had to have a .edu email account. You had to have it slowly started out with different with a handful of universities and then branched its way out to all the universities and colleges before it went to everybody who was able to use it. So this is my profile picture with my grad school roommate, um, clearly doing the college thing, grad school thing and having a drink. And, um, you know, at that point, at 22, 23 years old, I could care less that I had a profile picture with a beer in my hand and just being my... 22 self. Um, now I would definitely reconsider that for my profile picture, but it just shows that I just wanted to show that this was very college centric when it first started and only college kids had it. And it was a great thing to have back then, especially when for somebody like me who moved to Phoenix, not no, really knowing anybody except for people I had years before been in youth group with. And so I was able to catch up with those people and then that's how I made my group of friends here in Phoenix when I moved here um, and strangely ended up a couple of years later at I so Facebook back then was very different it was very young and now it's for everybody with the average age around 40 but you know there are younger kids that use it the high school kids will start using it for different high school classes or for when they are getting ready to apply for colleges um, because they have different outlets that they can use to find a roommate and to find different things about college and make some friends before they actually go off to college. Um, so there are some younger people, but they don't really post a lot, which puts, you know, put pictures or put what they're doing or what's going on in the world. Um, but they do, you know, so it is for a lot, a, I would say my age and older is the most, mostly uses it. And so now we're gonna go beyond our Facebook. And so we have Instagram. Instagram is an app that we use on so, our phone. So uh, Aaron, just to, to um, a bit, you, there was a question about what you use the term meme. How would you define a meme? A meme is normally a picture that has, they'll use like words from a TV. So one of my go-to memes is from friends two of the friends stars jumping, like jumping in the air. And I use that for a lot for like a reaction of excitement. And so it kind of is a way to use a picture to depict what you are showing emotionally versus since you're not in person. And so a lot of times it's just, if it gets fancy and has movements, it turns into a gif or a gif, however you want to say it. Um, but they basically, it's a good way to, it's a, a meme is a good way to express yourself without using your, um, in a political way, um, my parents, so my parents and my older sister in El Paso, and we're not going for Thanksgiving and it's their year to go, we're supposed to go there for Thanksgiving. And my reasoning is it's really bad in El Paso right now and it's not safe anywhere any to travel in my opinion for my family. And so we've decided not to go. Well, the converse, there's a text group with my family and the conversation keeps talking about how it's not that bad near where my mom and my, my parents and my sister live. 
on their side of town. And so they just keep saying, it's not where we are. These numbers aren't near us, you know, which whatever, that's what they believe. So on the side, I've been texting my little sister memes of Trump with the fake news underneath it as something of a joke to show what I think that they're saying about the news. And so you can use them as jokes. You can use them as funny. Um, if any of you follow Joe Berman on Facebook, he likes to use those um, on showing his reactions and realities and stuff. So it's more of a fun thing in a way to just to express yourself with pictures. And so Instagram. So I wanted to get, teach you a little bit about Instagram, about the real facts about it. Um, pizza is the most Instagram food. The word Instagram means that the picture that's posted, you use picture, the largest group for Instagram is 18 to 34 year olds. A ton and ton of high school kids have it. I was trying to tweak my age on it to see if I could tell if you have to be 18 technically to use it. And I couldn't figure out how to do that. Um, because a lot of people who are 12, 13, even younger have Instagram. My niece who's 13 has had Instagram for a few years. Um, and so I know a lot of the, and most of the high school kids have Instagram. This is very huge for them. So I kind of think that you've got to keep it at 18 as the youngest. Um, and that they just lie about their age because there's no way, there's no way to prove it to them that you're not 18. Um, there's 2 million Instagram users visit at least one business profile on to, or follow a business and following means that you are basically friending like you do on Facebook, a business, and you get to see all their information and their advertisements that they put up on your feed. And so it'll come up as, Nike is a really big one. And so you'll probably see um, an ad for Nike with one of their sports players or something. Um, we're big bucks family in this house. And so Nike likes to show Giannis Antetokounmpo on um, Instagram and their, their Nike ads. And so I always keep a catch on those so I can show my six-year-old, but that's one of the ways to catch people. And so it's all through it's all through photos versus words. Um, the word, the name Instagram comes from, from, sorry, hold on. Tell, from mashing up Insta, instant camera and telegram. So it's, it does use words, but it doesn't use as many words. Um, top three brands of popular here, National Geographic. If you are on Instagram, that is a good follow. It's just some really amazing pictures from all over the world, from animals to people. Um, Nike and Victoria's Secret. Um, and then Instagram is the second most used social media behind Facebook. So Instagram is great for showing pictures and I will show you a couple in a second for pictures and photo sharing. My suggestion, I know a lot of grandparents and parents have Instagram so they can see the pictures of their kids and grandkids. I know that I'm terrible about sending my parents pictures. And so my pictures well, my sister and my aunt sharing with my sisters. My sisters are both on Instagram, so that way they can see my boys a lot more often than when I share a picture. Um, it's a great way for advertising. Your companies, small businesses are amazing to use on this. And then following in influencers and brand ambassadors. So a brand ambassador and influencer are people just like you and me who decide that they want to really talk about a subject. So a good example is we have a ECC mom who is a brand, is a influencer and she does a lot for makeup and clothing brands. So you will see her post a picture almost once a day of her trying on a new outfit or trying on a brand. And then she'll put in a hashtag with that brand. And we'll talk about that in a second. And so that way that company is seeing that she's using them. And then also you can see where she's buying her clothes and her makeup and things like that. And so what it does is it gets more people to follow her because she doesn't care who she's fo who's following her um, to see her stuff. And then these companies end up giving you free stuff as a thank you for using them. Now you have to do it a lot, a lot, a lot. This isn't just a one or two times thing. I wish it was, that would be amazing but it's something you have to do on a consistent basis. A hashtag is the little number symbol 
that you see a lot of places, you do not have to use a hashtag at all. People use it so that way, if I Google searched, let's just say hashtag Temple High, anytime anybody ever wrote hashtag Temple High in one of their social media outlets, you'll be able to find it. And so it's kind of a way to kind of group people and group ideas and events together. Um, I believe it was last year we did at Temple High, we had a, a frame and it said hash, hashtag high family, hash, hashtag Shavua Tov for the new year. And so that way people knew to tag these things so that way other people can see them when they looked up these specific hashtags. Um, Instagram does have younger followers. It's a lot of fun if you really, you know, you can do videos and you can do pictures and um, it's a great way to show silly silliness, nothing serious about it. And um, you can only post by your phone. You cannot post on your computer, which is a little bit different than most of these other programs. You have to use them on the phone. We, um, you cannot use on your on your your computer. And so it's something that you have to basically have this with you, which for me, I keep my phone with me and that's where I take all my pictures. So it makes sense, but not everybody works that way. So this is what Instagram looks like. Whoops. So these are a couple of my Instagram posts and then a city of Phoenix one. So my Instagram name is winning mom since my last name's win and I'm a mom. So that's just how I came up with my silly name. And so I post a picture every week of my kids lunch bags. I decorate their lunch bags every single week or every single day for school. It's kind of my art therapy. And so you'll see that 28 people liked my photo. There's a bunch of other pictures behind it. I can't show them to you because I just took a screenshot. Um, but I just put a little blurb about what I was doing. Sound for Lucas this week is M. So M bags of the week, Ghostbusters per Tucker's request last week of in-person for a while. And then people can comment on them or put in them, which, you know, like my younger sister, which is our Rob JP, J Pervin, she put hand clapping as action. Another one is that I put is Tucker and I, we've been walking to school. So I posted our first walking to school and I put hashtag Tucker Benjamin. School is just a walk away. So now we get to have an amazing, we get to have amazing walks together. And every time I put my son, one of my boys's pictures, on Instagram, I always do hashtag Tucker Benjamin or hashtag Lucas Gregory. So that way, later on, if they want to look it up, they can see all the photos of them if they just Google hashtag with their name. And yes, there are other Tucker Benjamins, um, multiple dogs, because that's a big dog name. And then um, there is a couple of Lucas, there's one or two Lucas Gregory. So there are other people in the pictures, but clearly they know what they look like. And who they are. And so it just kind of is a fun way for them to be able to see later on their pictures or me to go back through memories or my husband. And then a city of Phoenix, I actually just follow, started following them a couple of weeks ago. Um, just, I don't even know why, but I thought it was just really cool. They post pictures of different things going on in the Valley or different remembering for memories and stuff. And so their hashtag was November to remember. And so you could look if you look that up, you're going to see things from all over the country about November to remember, but they also put hashtag Phoenix. And if you look up hashtag Phoenix, you'll see stuff about Phoenix. And so it's just a cool way to keep a look at everything. And so those are three real posts that I literally took off my phone um, to show you guys. And then we have Twitter. Does anybody have any questions about Instagram? Okay. If you have a question at any time, just interrupt me. I'm sorry, Erin. My question is about how to use it. Like, how to I, use it. yeah, I I have it downloaded on my phone, but okay. I know that there must be like not only the screen I see, but there must be something more than that. But I have no idea how to do that. So okay. let me see if I can. Let me pull up my an Instagram screen. Hold on. One second. I'm on my friend's computer because my computer is back ordered currently. So this will just take a second.
Oops. Hmm. Maybe that's not my password. So I can't think of what my password is right now. I apologize. So when you get onto Instagram, you'll log in with your email and your password. And there are, I can show you on just a regular. Do you have to create an account with Instagram in order to use it? Do you need to create an account? And where do you go for that? Uh, you Google that? You can Google that and you can add it to for or go, or I would go to the app store on your phone, whether you have an Android or an iPhone, go to your app store and you're gonna download the app because you want the app because that's the only way you're gonna be able to see and po post yourself, post pictures yourself. And so you're gonna to get to a screen. This is a good one. Okay, so your screen is gonna look like this once you get in, it's gonna ask you a couple of some questions, your name, a little bit about yourself, fill out whatever you want. Of course, if there's a red asterisk, you must fill it out. They'll ask you your birthday. And so you'll have your profile and you'll pick, if you want, you can have a picture. Um, I think they let you pick, leave it blank if you want to. Um, I try to always put my face and not many other people's faces in my pictures, just so that way people know who actually they're following. Um, especially those, you know, I have friends who have the exact same name. And so it's a little bit annoying when I can't see which version of, you know, which person that is of that name. Um, and so then you've got on the bottom of your screen, you have the little home, which is going to show your feed. And so I'll show you mine. And so it just looks exactly like the one that I'm showing you in the background. Um, and so this is my feed. It's got BuzzFeed is my first news source that comes up for today, for right this moment, um, with Michael B. Jordan being the people's sexiest man alive, which is filling up my feed like crazy today. Um, then you've got the little, the little mirror, the magnifying glass. And you have Rabbi Capel who's showing you some exercises. That's another great source that you can get on there. You can have the magnifying glass where you can search for something. You can search for a person's name or you can search for a topic that you're looking for. The little plus sign, which is right behind this person, the cartoon thumb is where you can add a photo. And so you can add a photo or you can add a group of photos or you can add one video. It won't let you do multiple videos in an upload. Um, a heart means that you like something. And then this last thing is your profile. And so it kind of lets you, it's, it's, on the more simple end, my opinion, for social media, some of the other ones are a little bit or a lot harder to work with and try and try to figure it out. Um, but when you go to search and let's say I'm looking up Rabbi Capel, actually, I don't think I follow Rabbi Capel, so I could look up Rabbi Capel. So I'm going to, oh, she just, she just friended me. So if I was looking up Rabbi Capel, I will show you one second just discovered you can also use an ipad oh that's good to know thank you working on here what's her name on on um, instagram is it rabbi capel it is i will look hold on one second we can't hear you rabbi you're muted i don't really use the instagram uh, much i have no idea what my <laughs> what my name is let's see I signed up for it a long time ago. Is there a way to change? I didn't know what I was doing and I just put down Finberg Barbara down because I- You I can change your I, name. How do you, how do, can you, is, there is yeah. a way to change You're gonna name. go to the little picture of the face at the bottom right hand. You're right, the phone's left. You're right, the phone's so left. So it's gonna be right here, the little picture of the Oh, face. I see, okay, okay. And you're gonna push edit profile, which is just past the beginning, just underneath the picture. Okay. And you can change it however you want. So mine, you're not gonna be able to see it, but it says Aaron Pervin Win, username winning mom, and you can change it. Um, I've had Instagram since pre-kids, and so mine was definitely not winning mom pre-kids, so I definitely changed it. Um, you can put a website if you're attached to a company or you have your own business. And then a little bit about a bio if you want. I have a Gandhi quote, but you don't have to put anything. 
do you lose if you had another account under another name? I mean, when I did this a year long time ago, I didn't know what I was doing. And then when I opened it up recently, I've got like, I don't know, 150 followers or something. I don't know where they came from, but it seems like they're people that knew me from Facebook. And then I found that I had put one picture into Facebook about a year ago and it jumped into the LinkedIn. So, so I, I will, once I, once I figure out how, I know how you did it. I need to figure out how to explain how to undo that. No. Oh. Um, so Instagram, I know on, you can do it either direction that if I post a picture on Instagram, I can make it show it shows up on Facebook or if I put it on Facebook, it can make it show it show up on Instagram and you can opt out for that. Oh. Also. So I need to, fi I'll figure it out and email you how to Thank the step-by-step -step directions so we can figure out how to do that. Right. Um, because mine just, I have to opt into it because I corrected it once that I couldn't just automatically do it because you don't need to see, you know, every single picture of my child on Facebook um, and Instagram. I'm almost solely post my children. Um, just cause in my opinion, they're adorable, but you know, <laughs> not everybody needs to see that. Um, and so those are the, um, Barbara, we can, we'll totally talk Instagram and we'll figure this out together. Um, and then I'll just keep moving ahead right now. And so we're gonna, whoops. Okay, so Twitter. So a lot of people use Twitter. It goes in, it goes, in my opinion, it goes in waves with the, the younger crowd on who uses Twitter. I think it's definitely an older group of people um, even though this says 40 plus, I think it might be, in my opinion, it's a little bit older from what I can tell, but that's my opinion. The facts say the average age is 40. Um, about 550 million people have sent at least one tweet. You could be my husband who has Twitter, who has never sent a tweet. Um, there's 22, but is always on Twitter. 22% of Americans are on Twitter. Um, Obama has the most amount of followers, followed by the pop stars Katy Perry and Justin Bieber. A day's, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Um, a day's worth of tweets would fill a 10 million page book. And there's wow. 10 tweets per second that mention Starbucks, which as a, you know, not as much anymore because we can't really go out to Starbucks as often. And I'm more of a drive through girl now, but um, I definitely can see it the Starbucks comment, because I definitely have seen tons of people taking photos of their coffee. So it makes perfect sense to me. Okay, so those were the concrete facts. These are a little bit more general and opinions from either what I heard or from my research or from what other people have been telling me. It's more of an instant source of news. You can find out things as they're being, told. I know my husband uses it for instant sources of news. He loves watching the news. We have the news News or ESPN is, seems to always be on in our house, but when he's at work, he he's a surgical rep. So he's in surgeries a lot of the time, making sure doctors are doing what they're supposed to be doing, but he doesn't have the access to his, you know, to watch TV. And so in, Twitter is a good source to find out what's going on. He loves a great, a good breaking news story. Um, trending articles are there on the top of your Instagram feed. It tells you what's trending. Um, today, something that's trending is Kevin Hart's new comedy special, which has some foul language. My husband was like, I hope nobody asks you literally about that because of the name um, has some bad words in it. But so that's trending. That's what that means that people are talking about it uh, in the world of Twitter. Um, Aaron, is there a current, is there a limit on the, the, the number of characters in a tweet as there used to be? Didn't they raise it? I, I'm I'm not sure. I'm asking because I just wanted it to. From 140 to a little bit more. Like I think yeah. you can do get a decent paragraph out there. I, I, I just know. wanted to put out to people if anybody yeah. uh, is interested. I did a project one time called the Twitter Torah, where I reduced every chapter of the entire Torah to a tweet. So if anybody is interested in seeing and that, and that's 140 can... characters, not yeah. words characters. Which yeah. I can't even imagine Rabbi Capel doing that because that sounds, it's hard enough to get just a personal thought out there versus the Torah um, into 140 characters. Um, Twitter is a great way to express yourself as a person. Um, they are 
censoring some stuff. They do pull off things that they find is not being real news or inappropriate news. Um, build connection and networks of those in your field is a great thing source to use. You can reach a large number of people quickly. Um, and it's more for text, not for pictures. And so Twitter is um, much more text centric than photo centric. So uh, Aaron, uh, yeah. just to let you know, I just, I just Googled it. And as of August 3rd, 2020, uh, you have 280 characters. That includes spaces, of course. There we go. 280, which is a lot more words, a lot more words you can get out there. Um, Twitter is, because it is censoring, there is a couple of other outlets that are out there that are not as censored um, that you'll see more. There's been a I'm blanking on the name, it starts with a P. I'm gonna come up with this. But that does not censor what you post. And so because of that, people are pulling a little bit away from Twitter who don't like the censorship that's coming from them. Um, the censorship is mostly to get only clear, concise, true news, not the stuff that's made up or inappropriate or, um, not teaching people what sh it should be teaching. Now it might censor you for something that you think is correct and they don't feel it's correct and you can argue it with the Twitter people. But um, for the, my brother-in-law that's happened to him a couple of times, it just depends on what they catch and the words that they catch in their algorithm of how they're censoring things. Um, and so, you know, there's been tons of people that get censored and get things pulled off, everybody from presidents to famous people to the average person. So it's not sing singled out on anybody. It's just the word algorithm that they're picking up um, to be able to censor it. And so these are a couple of tweets that from my personal Twitter that I don't often use. So it's just a bunch of random people. Um, mostly of somebody who I'm friends with liking something else. Um, you could see like Ross Wolman liked a comment so it popped up on mine. But then if anybody wants a good funny read, my shul called life is a really funny Twitter um, name to follow. It used to be, or their name is at Rogue Shul. And it, they post really funny things that happen in their synagogue and they don't post which synagogue. I do know it's an East Coast synagogue, but it's a little bit funny of like what people do in their congregants and, you know, holidays. And they were posting a lot about the virtual stuff for High Holy Days and just really silly brainless stuff. You can also follow a, most, if not all news sources. Um, a lot of famous people use Twitter. Um, for text and it's mostly text you will see some photos but definitely mostly text and i think it's mostly i think it's mostly towards newsworthy stronger worded stuff and and then educated opinions i think this is a more serious outlet versus instagram or, or facebook which is more light and fluffy okay snapchat so Aaron, this, how do you, I wanted to ask, how yeah. do you get on to, to Twitter? You're going to go, you're, so if you're going to be on your phone or your iPad or your tablet, you're going to go to the app store and download the Twitter app. And the logo looks just like this. It's that cute little bird. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and then they're going to ask you to start an account, which includes your email and your, um, you'll make a password and just like that. And then in the little magnifying glass, you'll be able to start searching for different topics or news sources. So like in Phoenix, I like to follow local news just because, you know, some people can't stand local news. I just always find it really interesting. So I would, let's say 12 News NBC or NBC Phoenix 12 News. And that's how, and you'll find our Thank local you. news for NBC. Thank you. And so, and then you can start, it gives you a little place where you can add, you can follow them. Like it's like, I think it's Twitter, I think is a check mark. Is a plus. Thanks. Yeah. So Snapchat, Snapchat is more, is more for kids. Um, this says three fourths of the users are 18 to 24 years old. Um, Snapchat's an app that allows you to photo share with videos online. Unlike Facebook and Instagram, your content erases immediately, permanently 
after people watch it. You get one chance, if it's sent directly to you, you get a chance to rewatch it once, but then it's gone forever. Once it's viewed, it disappears and becomes irretrievable. Um, this is great, except for it gets some people into trouble because some people decide that this is a great way to send inappropriate photos. So that's the only negative about this, um, especially when I was working with teens, I would hear about this. and. It's very upsetting to me and you should never put anything inappropriate of yourself um, on the internet, whether it's Snapchat or not. And so um, I think, I definitely think that I've always said to parents, like you should be following your child to make sure that nothing's inappropriate because it kind of shows, it scares me a little bit. Um, I've seen teenagers do things like smoking cigarettes or drinking and, th and partying. And I'm like, that's no, sorry. Like, that's not okay. You need to be an appropriate human being. In the US, 90% of all 13, 24 year olds use Snapchat. I have, um, we have a bunch of cousins that live all over the United States. Um, they're my husband's first cousin's kids and they all have Snapchat and I'm friends with every single one of them. And we snap pictures of silliness to each other and it's tons of fun, but nothing I nothing is of, of real substance. It could be, them doing their homework. It could be a picture of them. You know, I could take a screenshot, a picture of my computer right now, teaching this class and send it to them. Like just another Wednesday teaching people, you know, and put like a cutesy little design. Um, you can do filters, which are filters are a little, the com computer generated look that you can add on to your pictures. You see Tucker has cartoon eyes um, making a kissy face. And then this one was for Halloween, Lucas was made like a little um, vampire while he was listening. He was in an army outfit listening to music on his headphones in real life. And so it added the makeup and the blood and the coffin look in the mirror. Um, Taco Bell paid, this is the craziest thing, $75,000 for 24 hours of a taco filter. So what it did is it turned everybody's face into looking like a taco. And so people send those pictures and it's silly, but it's advertising for companies. 93% um, have sent a photo of a drink and it's a quick way to share what's going on immediately with friends. You can take short videos. Um, my neighbor who is a Temple High family also, will send pictures of our, each other, to each other of our kids doing like just the weird kid things. Or we'll send a photo of what we're eating for dinner um, to share it with each other so that way, you know, Hey, if you want this recipe, let me know, but it's look at my yummy dinner. I'm eating healthy. I'm, or look at me chowing down on a huge thing of ice cream, which that's a big one in my, in my world. Ice cream is very important. Um, so Snapchat is very fun. It's very young. They do have advertisements on it. They do have um, silly challenges like what's your 10 second trick? And so you'll see a bunch of videos of random kids that people that submit these pictures in for their random ch trick might be standing on their head. It might be locating their arm or weird people things that people can do or flipping their water bottle and it landing correctly back on the bottom. And so it's just a very silly, fun outlet, mostly kids. Um, as all the youth that I texted about and talked to about this class, they said, tell them all not to use Snapchat and that's a waste of time. So that's my tip to you, take it or leave it. <laughs> um, they all just use it for silliness and you know, having fun with it. Um, this is a little bit more about Snapchat. It can tell you your location if you allow it, um, which I personally keep it off. I think that's dangerous to show people your location. You have to be their friend anyway, but I still find it a little bit too weird. The second one is the talking. So it can either be chatting like a text message that goes away or it can be photos. The middle one is she's just taking a picture of herself. The second to last one, number four, is the different things that people that people are taking videos of and including it with these special filters so that way everybody can see it like makeup destruction, which, you know, that's what people do, I guess. And then the other one is actual, a little bit more content of what's happening now, but it's still very lighthearted. And so again, just like it's, I have it, it's a really big waste of time, to be honest. Like I've never used it so much in my life until I got laid off and now I have all this time on my hands. And so that's how I've learned how to use Snapchat.
TikTok. So TikTok is a little bit more trendy. It program right now, it's 60 second videos. Um, they're way for users to share videos and create videos. The most users, almost half the users are teens. It's focused on Gen Z. So young, young college kids, young adults, but not for kids, even though kids, you'll hear about kids and grandkids, you know, your grandkids using it. Um, the average time I've spent on TikTok, which was crazy to me, is 52, 52 meaningful, 52 minutes a day for fun and meaningful um, short entertainment. Did I put a second one? For watching videos, how-to videos. There are some actually amazing how-to videos on TikTok. I've had TikTok, I took it away because I was spending a little bit too much time watching these silly videos. And then the other day I just started to watch these how-to videos when I was doing research for this. And um, there's some amazing tips and tricks and life hacks that you can find on it. There's this one tip where you take all your towels, you stick them in the bathtub of warm water, you put a whole bottle of wool light in it, you put some detergent and it's supposed to pull out all the dirtiness that's in your towels even though you've been washing it. I have a friend who did it, her water was disgusting looking. So these tips and tricks do actually work. There's some tips and tricks about how to cook and so you can take some doing some cooking videos. There's also some silly videos of people dancing. If you do have Facebook, a lot of people were posting, especially at the beginning of COVID, videos of their families dancing. This is coming from TikTok, and so there's 60 second dance videos. There's also, um, like, I'm trying to think of another hack. Oh, how to take your hacks that I watched recently was you take your Oreo, you put a fork into the frosting, so you have your Oreo sitting in the frosting, and then that's how you dunk it into your milk so you don't have to get your fingers dirty. And so it's very silly and it can be very actually useful. Um, when it comes to actual meaningful things that you're looking for, I have a friend who is really into the vinyl circuit cutter with making cards and making stickers for water bottles, and she gets a lot of her ideas from these videos. And so it's, is, it can be very helpful, it can be very, very silly, of people doing very silly things for up to 60 seconds. Um, if anything, it's a good entertainment thing. I've never posted on anything on it. I have a friend who, um, her kid likes to make videos and put them on and teach people how to do silly six-year-old things um, with her Barbies and things like that. So it ranges, ranges from the, rage, the age group, but it's definitely a younger outlet. Um, and this is another one where the, the, young, the youth had said, tell these people just they don't need to be on it. And I said, okay, but some of the how-to videos, if you want to mess around, are very interesting. So Pinterest, this has been going on for a while now. Pinterest, um, I want to say, got started to get big about eight years ago. It was definitely after I got married, which was about 10 years ago. And it's a great way to look up ideas. Most users are women. Um, it's third biggest in, in the United States for the social networks. 98% of these users have tried something on, on Pinterest. It helps definitely drive consumer purchasing, inspire people, great way to find crafts, recipe, do it yourselves, style, home decor inspirations. This is a version of what if a Pinterest board looks like, what you would look when you, if I looked up coffee tables, this is what it would show you a bunch of different coffee tables and then you can click onto it and it goes to a website. So some are promoted by different companies. So you can see that you could click straight to Wayfair and others are, could take you to a website that's like a, an online magazine of showing you a bunch of different tables. It just depends on what it was. Um, I, a lot of my friends do tons of this stuff, this looking up this stuff for their weddings. I have a bunch of friends that use it for fashion. I personally use it for um, recipes. This is my go-to recipe thing. When I got my Instant Pot a couple of years ago, this was the first place I looked for recipes. And then you can save them. And so your board, this is just a picture from that I found on the internet, but this person, Eleanor, has um, food, a food section, a craft section, cute section, style, entertainment. And so you can just separate what, you, what you're looking for, looking at, and you can save the pictures. Uh, my husband actually recently, during COVID, has realized that he can do a lot of stuff himself um, versus calling somebody to come fix things and make things and build things that we need. And so um, he built 
a bike rack out of PVC piping for my boys' bikes. And he found all the instructions on Pinterest. So it's a really great way to find some DIY stuff that you want the written out instructions or you want the different options for instructions. Jane. How do you get onto Pinterest? You're gonna either download the app, which on your phone or your tablet, or you can actually go to just pinterest.com and you can, you can make an account and so you can look for it. And in the top right here, it's, it has a search bar and you can just type in anything you want. Um, a great example of anything you want. My kids, my older one was really into paint by, or color by number. So I looked color by number and it gave me a ton of options to find. And if you put the word free in it, now it's showing me all the color by numbers that I can print for free at home so I don't have to buy anything. And so you can do that. You can do, I, um, I'm guessing I will be on here in the next couple of days. I'm making my very first Thanksgiving dinner all by myself um, for our little family of four. And so I will probably be on here trying to come up with Thanksgiving recipes um, unless I want to call my mom. And so who normally makes Thanksgiving dinner? I do use it for the other holidays like Hanukkah to come up with good recipes or fun crafts to do. Um, I do use it when I was looking for a dog. I honestly used it a lot looking for cute little dogs, even though we ended up rescuing a dog, but just because they're adorable to look at. Um, so you can definitely do different kinds of things. If you live, you know, we all live in Phoenix, except for Rabbi Capel's mom. I believe everybody else is in Phoenix. And you can look up Phoenix to do, and it'll show you pictures of different things that people have posted to do. Now, back to if you're somebody who influences other people, like my friend that go, whose kid is in the preschool, who does style and makeup, she might post something and put her, like a picture of her in an outfit with her name, and then it'll all, from all the other social networks, it kind of all bunches together um, to find the same person. So you might see a picture that you see on here, and you might also see it somewhere else on a different social media outlet. Um, it is really fun to look at the different clothes. It looks, you know, recipes are my go-to and some of the, you know, you'll see even the recipes like you see right here in the middle of the screen, these cute little red, white, and blue strawberries. And then you might see also the pictures of the failures, which for some reason I love to watch, go, see a good failure of a cooking project. So you could see really funny things also. It doesn't always have to be as serious. Okay, any other questions about Pinterest? Is there some place where you can get more information about how to change with the thing with these boards? I've got yes. some boards started from when my daughter-in-law and daughter's weddings because they were using those boards for the weddings. And, and now I try to use it for other things and I see I've got stuff in the wrong boards. And how do you- You can edit them. You can edit them. And under edit, let me see if I can pull up my account. And are they always, is there a way to make it, pri I don't understand how you make it private. Or yes, you can make it private also. I'll have to, it's under preferences. Preferences, okay. Let me see if I can pull up my Pinterest. One second. It seems like you can save all kinds of things, but if you don't know where to put them, then you can't find them. Right. That's very true. Hmm. Okay. Let me just get on a regular Pinterest board. My passwords are saved in my phone and in my iPad. And so I'm not used to having to look up my passwords. Okay, let's see. Oh, wait, here, continue with Facebook.
Okay, it should be coming up. Okay, so this is my just generic what comes up at what basically they fill it up with things that they believe that I would like from things that I have favorited, I guess is the word you could push it. Um, you can save it. So like, I might save this one under cooking. And that's my cooking board. And now it's saved. So if I want to look at my board. So these are my pins. So these are those are things that I have decided that I'm interested in and I wanted to save them. So a good example, let me think of. I do a lot of Oh, here, work. So this is my saves from when I was working at Temple High. Um they might be a lot of them are centerpieces from galas. And so let's just say that I'm done with looking at this stuff from the galas. I can go, how did I do this? I cleaned it out recently um, before I left the temple. Oh, you can edit it by pushing the little pencil and you can delete. And so that way it's no longer there. And then I've deleted that pin. And I believe you can do that for a whole chunk of stuff. And so you'll see that like some stuff is from Gala, like the sunflowers are from when Rabbi Mari was honored. Um, this dragon breathing craft is something I used at the pre-K class to talk about feelings. Um, so you'll see like different things. And then I'm like, oh, we've already done sunflowers for the Gala with these wooden discs. I might not want them anymore because I don't need to worry about saving them. I can just delete my little post. And so that way it's no longer in my memory of saving stuff. And then when I search for things, you can be pretty specific. Hmm. And it will come up with different ideas for your Thanksgiving dessert, including chocolate. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna save this while we're here because this looks delicious, the pecan pie brownies. So now I've got this saved under my cooking so that way later on I can look at it and I can pull up the recipe and um, make it for my family because that looks amazing. Um, does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is definitely more towards women. You can see how it's made with pictures, the way the graphics, things like that is definitely towards women but men definitely can use it. Um, my husband, I told you, has used it for bike rack. We've, he's fixed a couple of different things in the house that he has used it to figure out how to do it, um, through Pinterest. Um, then let me just pull back up. Yes. There you go. Okay. So Venmo, there was a couple of people who were asking about Venmo. And so Venmo is this amazing app that can, uh, it attaches itself to your bank account. So you don't need to switch bank accounts. You don't need to have your money in a separate bank account for Venmo. It attaches to your bank account, whether you use US Bank or Wells Fargo or Bank of America or any other, pro or any other banking options, you can be able to attach it. You're gonna, it's gonna ask you, um, it's, it gives you very specific details on how to attach your bank account to it. My, I started to write it out. It's a, it's a handful of steps. If you just Google how to set up my Venmo account, it gives you picture by picture ways to set up your Venmo account. I personally use this a lot for babysitters. The teenagers all seem to have Venmo because they pay each other back. They pay, you know, that's a great way for parents to give them some money into their bank cards. Um, it's just a great way to do it when you don't have cash on hand and with, you know, especially with the change shortage and nobody wants to touch each other's money. This is a great app to have. Um, I wrote, it's easy to use. Even my mom figured it out, which is beyond true. That's how easy it is. My mom is not 
I, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, Erin, but um, you know my daughter, Elena Gold, mm -hmm. and um, she had somebody hack her Venmo account. Really? And they contacted all of her contacts and said, hey, I need $50 for my phone bill. Could you lend it to me until I get paid Friday? Well, most of her friends knew they'd never that asked for that, at, but we don't know if anybody sent them money because they contacted all of her contacts. Mm -hmm. So... Um, that's terrifying. Yes. So be careful. My suggestion is it will tell you, you can get onto your, to somebody's Venmo account and it will tell me every single one of my contacts and how they're using Venmo, unless you make your Venmo private. So with that said, I have seen, you know, let's, I'm just going to use people as an example from this group. Let's say Rabbi Capel, a dinner and send it to camp, to, Sharona Silverman with the little picture of a plate they use. They love this Venmo loves a good emoji. Um, I don't really need to know that, you know, Rabbi Capel might send, send something to Ingrid and it might be something private and she still writes something and now everybody sees it. Nobody needs to see those things. I've seen a couple um, of my peers of friends <laughs> write weed on it. So marijuana. And I'm like, you don't need to share that information with people. It doesn't need to be out there. So there is a spot that makes it private. Don't share with everybody. That's something I've always done. I've always, you know, my, I would say all my Venmo either goes to one of my sisters for birthday presents or babysitters. I don't normally use it for anything else. So I really don't have anything to, to hide, but I don't want anybody to have access to my account and to be able to see what I'm doing with my money. Um, or how much, because you can see how much somebody is giving somebody else, which is the very weird privacy issue in my opinion. Um, and so I'll, I will say so to some teenagers that um, are using it a lot, like nobody needs to know what you're, pay you're spending your money on, like this is your private information. A lot of the college kids will use it for paying bills to each other since they're all roommates. Um, I have, friends with older kids who give their kids money or grandparents give their kids money that way and family members. It's easy to use, but definitely be cautious. Just like anything else you can get hacked, keep that password very private um, and keep it. So that way you can't see, people cannot see what you're sharing um, because it's just not necessary. It, you know, it is a little bit entertaining to see what some people are paying each other for. Um, but also at the same time, like nobody that's not anybody real inform real business except for your own and whoever you're paying. Um, you don't need everybody in, in your business. So I asked a bunch of our youth what they wanted to tell you all. And so I asked them over, I asked my community over Facebook. If you're Facebook friends with me, you might've seen my post. And so that was more of my contemporaries and older. And then I asked in, through text message and phone calls, a bunch of our younger youth and included is the youth really have a lot to say. Um, people my age and older have a lot that they don't know about and a couple things, you know, a few things to say. But so the youth said fix, stick with Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. Don't need to worry about Snapchat. Don't need to worry about TikTok and other things like that. They're the more simple ones to use. They do like that when they're, you know, they do find it cheesy that their grandparents or parents are following them. But at the same time, you get to know it's a great way to see what's going on in their life without being um, that overbearing parent or grandparent. And, you know, they do like that their grandparents know what's going on with them when they when they actually, when you outright ask them. Um, they might say they're embarrassed, but they really do. Um, I had a long conversation with some 20, my 21 year old cousins and they said, yeah, our grandparents and aunt and uncles all follow us. And it's kind of nice that they know what's going on with us in our sororities and college life and things like that. So it is, there is definitely a positive. Um, don't always believe what you read. There is lots of false information and misinformation out on the internet. Um, a great website is snops.com and it tells you if something's not true. Um, it tells you if often you'll see this famous person passed away and now all these people are talking about how this person passed away and it might not be true. You can always check these websites. I have twice told, like called my little sister that her fam favorite 
DJ had passed away and it was not true either time. So you need to definitely, for some reason, that's the big one that comes up of misinformation. Um, you'll see different news sites that put on information that might not always be true. So that's a great website to use to see if something is true or not true. Um, oh, I put that in the, the pictures in the wrong place. If you tag somebody, that means you put your, their name attached to a picture in your comments, make sure that it makes sense and it's not a random person is one of the suggestions. And um, we had, I've heard this from multiple people that their grandparents or parents will tag them in a post and it makes no sense and people start commenting on it and they have no idea what's going on. So just make sure that you don't add somebody's name by mistake to something that has nothing to do with them. Um, my aunt used to do that by mistake um, every now and then. And so all of a sudden I'd be like in a conversation, you know, seeing this conversation on Facebook about her and her college friends and I have nothing to do with it. So it's just, it could end up being a little bit inappropriate if certain conversations happen. Um, again, be appropriate. Don't embarrass, try not to embarrass anybody. Um, I like to look at it like, will my kids kill me if I, you know, one day if they see that I posted this picture of them? Um, I hope not. And if, if my answer is maybe they will, I don't post it. You know, you don't, well, I think their tushes are really adorable. Nobody else needs to see that. Um, it's a fun way to stay connected. And they're, the, the youth, their big, big thing was ask them questions. If you have questions about any social media, they're happy to answer you guys. They want you guys to be success, successful on it and not to have get frustrated. And they're the ones that know more than anybody else on these social media outlets. Um, it is also really, I'm all about Google. It's really easy to Google these things. Um, it's really easy to look up information and figure out how, you know, what's true or how to do it. And there's some pretty good step-by-steps. Let me just take this off one second. There's some pretty good step-by-steps that I found as I was going through all these programs and trying to figure out, you know, the difference between TikTok and the difference between and Snapchat and how to do this and how to do that. And um, it's really useful. And I know Facebook changes their layout constantly. And if it's frustrating for me who grew up in the world of computers and you know, had a phone at 18 years old, I can't imagine for your alls age group of how frustrating it is because you know next thing you know it things are in the wrong place and you can't find what you're trying to do and so feel free to ask questions i'm always around i'm definitely this is always by my side not only when my kids are at school but just you know just part of who i am so i'm here for you guys and you all have my email now does anybody have any other questions joe uh, i do uh yeah um Couple of things. First of all, um, you know, I, I I use a lot of uh, YouTube rather than Pinterest for for anything really. I mean, mm -hmm. if you want to know how to use um, uh, Zoom, for instance, there are gazillions of videos out there from the very simple, basic stuff to the more advanced uh, using national conference lines and all that good stuff. Yeah. So no matter what you're doing, YouTube is a great place and. With Venmo, what I don't understand is every bank that I know uh, uses Zelle, which is a way of sending money. And why you would use something that isn't secure that your bank doesn't support is well beyond me. If you have to have an account tied to it, then why not use your bank's tool? You know, it's crazy. So my husband and I have had this conversation. So I think it's because Venmo came out first or became big first. I don't know whether it came out officially first. Um, we were just having this conversation because he uses Zelle for that reason. And I use Venmo because that's what the, the youth uses and that's how I pay our babysitters. And so it just, they don't seem to use Zelle as much. I'm starting to see more use of Zelle. So I'm wondering if that's going to take over um, because well, it, it's, it's more directly. It's, secure. It, it's it sponsored by the banks. Right. And I'm sure it's much more secure than Venmo is. Yes, I'm sure. And I'm guessing that it's going to take over or Venmo is going to have to get the buy-in from the banks. Interestingly enough, I just recently, about two weeks ago, I bank with Chase, had somebody put money into my account 
through Zelle and I didn't know who they were. And so oh. I contacted Chase and I said, I don't want this person to have access to my account. And they said, well, then you need to change your email and you need to change your password. I'm like, I can't change my email. I use my email for all kinds of professional things. And they said, well, then you'll be liable if anything is taken from your account. Well, I don't understand that one at all because it's pretty simple to, to cut that out very simply. You just uh, discontinue Zelle on you. First of all, you had to sign up for it somewhere. You know, nobody can take anything from your account. They can only put stuff in. You, you know, and I think you're right, but that was the response I got from Chase. And it, I found that kind of scary. Well, in that case, my answer would be change banks. It's easy in changing your email. Yeah, I think you're, you're correct. And that's what I told them too. <laughs> I, I just want to mention, um, if any of you have Netflix, you should see the, the film, The Social Dilemma. Because all, can people hear me? Yes. Yeah. 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 Because these social media um, channels are fantastic, but that's not what the companies are. The companies behind them, the ones that are met, they're in mentions, Snapshot, Pinterest, uh, Facebook, they are collecting information, a ton of it about you. All right. Algorithms. I suggest that if you have Netflix, you ought to see it. Secondly, I've, been, I've worked in banking. I'm not a banker, but I've worked in banking. If you're going to do anything over the internet or through any of these channels, you've got to recognize that the firewalls, and I've been involved, I know a little bit about firewalls. None of them are perfect. And if you're going to certainly use some of these newer ones, you should get LifeLock or something else. Yes, identity theft is a very, very big issue. I know people that have been impacted and impacts a whole ton of your accounts. Um, be very careful when you use these mechanisms. But again, see the movie, The Social Dilemma. Everything that, you're ch that, that you click on, the amount of time you're on it, the different referrals that you make, all that data is being collective. So you should be very, very selective in what you're doing. And even the issue that Erin brought up about, I think it was Snapshot, and she said, oh, well, you know, it's here and it disappears. People can take snapshots of what you have there. Anything that you put on the internet is not private anymore. And industry uses it. People have been fired because of things that they have on the internet. So these things are great. Um, if you use it professionally, it's one thing, but if you use it socially, be very careful. I just wanted to, I'm sorry, I missed, I had to step away for a minute. If one uh, with uh, Venmo was to just post private instead of public, are you safe? I don't think, I don't think any anything is safe. I mean, any, I, I've been involved in internet banking and I might, my, and on the business side, I myself at this point, someday I'll do it. But I do not do internet banking. Everything is vulnerable. You, you hear about stores being hacked. Target's been hacked. Best Buy has been hacked. TJ Maxx has been hacked. You just have to realize that everything you do is, the, is subject to this. And we used to say in banking decades ago, you, you can tell someone's life through their checks. You know, people wrote checks. And you could find out everything you wanted to know. Well, once you do internet banking, or like me, I buy things off um, um, Amazon. You, you all know what happens. Am Amazon knows everything about you. They'll recommend books. They'll recommend my product. You just have to realize nothing is safe. Nothing. Just be conscious of it. Well, if you do, if you were to do it private, does that help a little bit? I'm not familiar with them, though. I would assume it's safe. I, I, I agree with what Erin says. I would assume that it's safer. But, you know, it's just a matter of risk. And um, that's what kids are using. They are. 
I, I taught at ASU. They did, that's what they do. It's convenient. It's user friendly. What can I say? Okay, so yes, private better than public. And Myra, what did you, do you want to explain about the iPad? Yes. Is there a specific question about the iPad, Myra? Uh, my grandchildren use them. I just uh, want to know how they work, what they, <laughs> what's the advantage of having them? What do they do? It's an easier touch screen version than a computer and it doesn't have as much act, as much you can't do quite as much as you can do on, an, on a computer, on a laptop or a desktop, but it has a similar, especially like if you're an I, Apple iPhone user, it has a similar look the iPad does um, and everything is touch screen. So like my kids have Kindle tablets, which is the same thing, just on brand. And my three and a half year old knows exactly how to get to his TV shows and get to games. And so it's a much simpler way to do things. And it, with it being touch screen, it's a lot more user friendly, especially for younger kids. Um, and for, um, it's a good use for games. It's a good use for, it doesn't have a keyboard except for just like your phone, it's got one on the screen. So it's a little bit harder on certain things, but it's definitely. Um, uh, Sandy Coppell, uh, Myra Salinger was just asking about an iPad versus a, a computer versus a phone. S since you use all three platforms, can you just talk for a minute about um, how you find the facility of the iPad versus the other two? You have to unmute. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I like the iPad because I can transfer it with me. If I start watching, I'm watching this on, on uh, my computer, so I'm stuck sitting here on my computer. If it was on my iPad and I wanted to go into my kitchen or go into another room, I take it with me, it goes with me. So that's easy. On the phone, for these kind of things, for Zoom, I find it not very good because it's small. You uh, get a very small picture. And uh, of course, it's easier to type on an iPad and much easier to type on a computer. My computer has a keyboard, much easier than doing a touchpad. Some iPads you can get a, uh, you can add a, uh, a keyboard to an iPad. Some people have a case for their um, iPad that has a keyboard attached to it. But I love my iPad because it's easy. It's easy to take. If I go someplace and they have internet, I have the, the iPad with me. And can you use it as a Kindle also? Yes, yes. You can download Kindle on it. Yeah, that, that, Myra, that's how I read most of my books, is through my iPad. Yeah, I, um, never read Myra, books. I never read my books on the iPad until COVID came, and I couldn't go to the library. Now I read everything on it, and it's great because you could read it. It's backlit. You don't need a lot of light. So you, don't, yeah. you can read it in a dark room, and it's very comfortable. Interesting. I, I'll tell you what I did, just, uh, from my, just quickly. Uh, the difference as I see it, is a tablet is a tablet. Um, you can buy an iPad for seven or $800 now, the newer ones. Uh, I got Carol, because she uses it for Kindle and just email and things like that. Uh, she got a, a Kindle Fire HD 10 inch device for $79, which works just great for her. And it does everything she needs it to do. So it depends on what your needs are. And what, if you're a big Apple person, then go with the $800 unit. If you really don't care, then I would suggest you might want to look at, the, uh, as Erin said, she's got her kids on, on uh, Kindle uh, Fire tablets. They have them for kids too. But you can pick one up right now for anywhere from $79 to $89 and they're perfect. My children bought me my uh, iPad for uh, my 80th birthday. I'm now 86 and it's still doing well for me. And um, I take it everywhere. It has a case. It's easy to use. And um, you, could, you could see it here. As I said, I, and if my daughter says there's a better picture of me on Zoom when I sit at my computer. So 
if I'm not <laughs> doing other things, I try and do that when I'm with my daughter. But she's pra practically the only one I, I, I'll do Zoom on uh, my computer with. <laughs> you also get a better if you're view classy. on uh, your computer. I can see uh, uh, many more people. On my iPad, I see, uh, mm -hmm. I think, nine people or something like that. You get a bigger uh, look on your iPad, on your computer. We got one for my mom when the first, uh, when my first grandchild was born, so she could do FaceTime. So she's, and she's 92, so she didn't get hers until she was close to 88. And it's so easy to use that, um, that's what- Erin, you were gonna say something? Oh, and if you're klutzy like I am, I have a very thick case on my iPad. So when I take it places, if it falls, it's not gonna, you know, my $800 iPad is not gonna shatter. So just, you know, my mom does not keep, she has a Kindle, does keep a case on it, has gone through two Kindles so far from shattering the screen. So please make sure that you think about that. And cases can be very inexpensive. Mine has, mine's actually a kid's case. So it's very durable and it has a little handle on it. So if I ask my kids to grab my iPad for me, they can grab it and I'm not worried. And they have the exact same case, just the Kindle version. Um, just it's basically very thick foam that can protect it. So make sure you do that just because I've seen my mom <laughs> break two Kindles at this point. And while they're much less expensive than my iPad, it's still money that you're wasting because you just dropped it. <laughs> so $20 Where do you buy for a case Kindle? Or oh, I'm sorry. Amazon. On and Amazon. Amazon. Any of you have any other questions before we let Aaron go? Uh, final final questions. Raise your hand. Yes, you can definitely access the internet with the iPad, Myra. Yes. Yeah. I, I would just like, since we mentioned Amazon, Rabbi, I just want to ask everybody if you're using Amazon, please go to smile.amazon.com and register Temple Chai as the beneficiary. All the purchases that you make using that website, uh, the temple gets 1% of. So uh, good idea there. And if you use Thank the you. app, it will work on the app. My family donated just during COVID over $200 from our Amazon Smile account, which it's not much that goes to them. And that's how much we pay, buy on Amazon. So it's a really great way just to give a little extra to the temple. Well, Aaron, this was just absolutely wonderful. So if you will please um, send me the PowerPoint, then I can disseminate that with the recording of this session. Absolutely. And um, I know- Absolutely, that... and Barbara, I'm gonna figure out your yeah. questions and I'll email you. Yeah, okay, that'll be great. And um, I know you would make yourself available on an individual basis if people wanted to Absolutely. follow up as well. So um, thank you very much all. We'll return to our regularly scheduled program already in progress uh, next week. And uh, have a good week. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Erin. You. Thank you all. Thank you. So good seeing you all. Thank you, Erin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rabbi, would you just like me to end it all?